In complexity theory, the class NC is the set of decision problems decidable in polylogarithmic time on a parallel computer with a polynomial number of processors. In other words, a problem is in NC if there exist constants C and K such that it can be solved in time O using O parallel processors. Stephen Cook coined the name of Nick's class after Nick Pipenger who had done extensive research on circuits with polylogarithmic depth and polynomial size. Just as the class P can be thought of as the tractable problems, so NC can be thought of as the problems that can be efficiently solved on a parallel computer. NC is a subset of P because polylogarithmic parallel computations can be simulated by polynomial time sequential ones. It is unknown whether NC equals P, but most researchers suspect this to be false, meaning that there are probably some tractable problems that are inherently sequential and cannot significantly be sped up by using parallelism. Just as the class NP complete can be thought of as probably intractable, so the class P complete, when using NC reductions, can be thought of as probably not parallelizable or probably inherently sequential. The parallel computer in the definition can be assumed to be a parallel, random access machine. That is a parallel computer with a central pool of memory, and any processor can access any bit of memory in constant time. The definition of NC is not affected by the choice of how the PRAM handles simultaneous access to a single bit by more than one processor. It can be CRCW, CRU, or EREW, CPRAM for descriptions of those models. Equivalently, NC can be defined as those decision problems decidable by a uniform Boolean circuit with polylogarithmic depth and a polynomial number of gates. RNC is a class extending NC with access to randomness. Problems in NC, as with P, by a slight abuse of language one might classify function problems and search problems as being in NC. NC is known to include many problems, including integer addition, multiplication and division, matrix multiplication, determinant, inverse, rank polynomial GCD, by a reduction to linear algebra using Sylvester matrix, finding a maximal matching. Often algorithms for those problems had to be separately invented and could not be naively adapted from well-known algorithms. Gaussian elimination and Euclidean algorithm rely on operations performed in sequence. One might contrast ripple carry adder with a carry look ahead adder. The NC hierarchy NCI is the class of decision problems decidable by uniform Boolean circuits with a polynomial number of gates of at most two inputs and depth O, or the class of decision problems solvable in time O on a parallel computer with a polynomial number of processors. Clearly, we have which forms the NC hierarchy. We can relate the NC classes to the space classes L and NI and AC. The NC classes are related to the AC classes, which are defined similarly, but with gates having unbounded fan in. For each I, we have as an immediate consequence of this, we have that NC equals AC. It is known that both inclusions are strict for I equals zero. Similarly, we have that NC is equivalent to the problems solvable on an alternating Turing machine restricted to at most two options at each step with O space and alternations. Open problem. Is NC proper? One major open question in complexity theory is whether or not every containment in the NC hierarchy is proper. It was observed by Papadimitriou that if NCI equals NCI plus 1 for some i, then NCI equals NCJ for all ji, and as a result, NCI equals NC. This observation is known as NC hierarchy collapse because even a single equality in the chain of containments implies that the entire NC hierarchy collapses down to some level I. Thus, there are two possibilities. It is widely believed that is the case, although no proof as to the truth of either statement has yet been discovered. 
Barrington's theorem. A branching program with n variables of width k and length m consists of a sequence of m instructions. Each of the instructions is a tuple where i is the index of variable to check, and p and q are functions from 1, 2, k, 2, 1, 2, k. Numbers chapter 1, 2, k are called states of the branching program. The program initially starts in state 1, and each instruction changes the state from x to p or q, depending on whether the ith variable is 0 or 1. A family of branching programs consists of a branching program with n variables for each n. It is easy to show that every language L on 0, 1 can be recognized by a family of branching programs of width 4 and exponential length, or by a family of exponential width and linear length. Every regular language on 0, 1 can be recognized by a family of branching programs of constant width and linear number of instructions. Instructions. BWBP denotes the class of languages recognizable by a family of branching programs of bounded width and polynomial length. Barrington's theorem says that is exactly non-uniform NC1. The proof uses the non-solvability of the symmetric group S5. The theorem is rather surprising. For instance, it implies that the majority function can be computed by a family of branching programs of constant width and polynomial size. While intuition might suggest that to achieve polynomial size, one needs a linear number of states. Proof of Barrington's theorem A branching program of constant width and polynomial size can be easily converted to a circuit in NC1. Conversely, suppose a circuit in NC1 is given, without loss of generality, assume it uses only in and not gates, lemma 1. If there exists a branching program that sometimes works as a permutation P and sometimes as Q, by right multiplying permutations in the first instruction by alpha, and in the last instruction left multiplying by beta, we can make a circuit of the same length that behaves as beta P alpha or beta Q alpha, respectively. Call a branching program alpha computing a circuit C if it works as identity when C's output is 0, and as alpha when C's output is 1. As a consequence of lemma 1 and the fact that all cycles of length 5 are conjugate for any two 5 cycles alpha, Beta, if there exists a branching program alpha computing a circuit C, then there exists a branching program beta computing the circuit C of the same length. Lemma 2. There exist five cycles gamma, delta such that their commutator is a five cycle. For example, gamma equals, delta equals. We will now prove Barrington's theorem by induction. Assume that for all subcircuits D of C in five cycles alpha, there exists a branching program alpha computing D. We will show that for all five cycles alpha, there exists a branching program alpha computing C. If the circuit outputs Xi, the branching program has one instruction checking Xi and outputting identity or alpha respectively. If the circuit outputs where C is a different circuit, create a branching program computing C and multiply output of the program by alpha to get a branching program outputting or alpha, i.e., alpha computing. If the circuit outputs join the branching programs that compute D, compute C, delta compute D, gamma compute C. If one of the circuits outputs zero, the resulting program will be identity. If both circuits output one, the resulting program will work as epsilon. In other words, we get a program epsilon computing. Because epsilon and alpha are two five cycles, they are conjugate, and there exists a program alpha computing. The size of the branching program is at most where d is the depth of the circuit. If the circuit has logarithmic depth, the branching program has polynomial length. 